We're here in the Counterman Education Center with none other than Clay Milliken, driver of the Parts Plus Top Fuel Dragster. With Clay here in our studio, I thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about the performance and racing parts segment. It might not be a huge segment for parts sellers, but it's a fun one. I know there are a lot of folks working in the automotive aftermarket who are racing fans themselves, so we're thrilled that you're here. Before we delve into the parts side of things, I was hoping we could talk about the other side of racing parts, and that's the driver's side. What's it like being behind the wheel of an 11,000 horsepower machine that goes from zero to 330 in less than four seconds? I'll tell you what, it is the ultimate roller coaster ride. I've been able to do a lot of really cool things in my life, but the feeling and the experience of what it's like to go zero to 100 miles an hour in less than one second, zero to 200 in two seconds, and zero to 300 in barely over three seconds, it is by far the e-ticket ride on the earth. Your pit crew essentially has to rebuild the engine in the Parts Plus Dragster after every run. What happens to parts like the spark plugs, piston rings, and head gaskets during a typical run? So every part has a shelf life, so to speak. Spark plugs, for example, they're a consumable item. They make one run. We run 16 spark plugs in the engine. There's two plugs per cylinder. And on a normal run, the ground strap on the spark plug will be burned away. That's mm. just part of a typical run. A head gasket, for example, may make a couple runs. They're made out of copper, so they're a little bit different than what we run on our everyday car. They're, they're a copper gasket. And as far as like rings, typically it's one run, sometimes two. And it tells you, like we, we inspect the part after every single run, after the fact. We do these engine rebuilds in about an hour, but during the week, all those parts that were run get inspected. Rod bearings, one run done, very much like spark plugs. They're, you know, they look like they've made a million mile run even though it's only been a thousand feet. So every run's got a certain amount of consumables that are one run and done. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing amount of work done by the pit crew in about an hour that can do a full engine rebuild. It is absolute organized chaos. It is like a ballet of mechanics rebuilding this thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sounds like it. So what are some of the ways that performance and racing parts are different from the OE parts that are used on passenger vehicles? Some of those parts are not really a lot different. Let's just take the supercharger belt for example. Gates has learned from racing how to make your serpentine belt that goes on your streetcar last longer. So the stresses that we put them through obviously put them to the ultimate test of either making a great run or braking. And that goes through the entire race car. There's so many different parts that OEs and the manufacturers have been able to take racing and make you a better part for your street car. Mm, very cool. So the performance segment is constantly growing and if you've ever been to the SEMA show in Las Vegas, you get a sense of how big it truly is. In fact, the specialty automotive equipment market was estimated to be a $46 billion market in 2019. So there are plenty of opportunities for parts stores that want to get involved. So what kind of advice would you give to a counter person when they get a customer who's interested in performance and racing parts? Well, when you got a customer that comes in and, and he's asking about a performance part, the first thing that you really need to do is find out what they're interested in. Are they a drag racer? Are they a road racer? Are they doing something for a car show? Are they doing a resto mod? The more information you can pull out of the customer, the better you'll be suited to send them down the, the road that they need to be on because each one of these things kind of have their own little niche. Mm -hmm. And those parts, while some will go from one to the other, they don't necessarily all cross paths. So the more information you get from your customer, the better you can serve them. And more importantly, you'll get a repeat customer that's going to come back and buy more parts from you. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Are there any trends that parts sellers should be aware of when it comes to performance and racing parts? Well, no different than your street car. There are so many now kits available. And I, I even mean with high performance parts. You can get a complete fuel injection kit. You can get a complete timing kit, a complete head bolt kit, yeah. bottom end kit. And the more you can direct your customer to buy these kits, the happier your customer will be and they'll find it to be easier while they're working on their project. And it doesn't matter if it's street car, performance car, there's kits available and the counterman should look into those. Clay, we really appreciate you taking the time uh, to be with us today. I have really enjoyed this. This has been a lot of fun. I hope to get to do it again. And to all of our viewers out there, thanks for watching.